Okay, good morning. Uh, take number three. I kind of get going through these things, and I got a lot of stuff lined up for you. The headline today is, no big fire starts last night in L.A. That's huge because we did have that huge containment uh, circle around both the big fires, and no fires spread from that with these stronger winds. The strongest winds right now are kind of Oxnard, Malibu North, up towards into Ventura. Uh, they did have a fire there last night that broke out kind of in the canal area and in the, in the river area there where the water runs out to the ocean. And they, they looks like they snuffed it out pretty quick last night. Uh, you can see no smoke in Southern California. You can't. There is some smoke. The air quality on there is not awesome, but it's not horrible. But you can see that we're not seeing any visible. Remember when the fires were blowing? We could see the smoke blowing offshore. So the strongest winds now are a little further north up towards uh, north of Malibu into Oxnard and Ventura. So Los Angeles still has the extreme fire danger. Um, a PDS, a particularly dangerous situation represented in purple or blue. Or per, I guess that's purple. And that's for these areas, which makes sense again, because that is in that Oxnard, Ojai area. The, this is kind of a newer alert, by the way, or at least for northern california i've never seen one up this far north but it's basically all these areas in reds are your red flag warnings and fire warning concerns but that purple area is like oh this is level up from a red flag warning which is already a 10 so it's kind of like that movie spinal tap right where they just turn it to 11 and this is a pds and i'm not making light of it at all because it's it's absolutely necessary and and uh, i like that they do that because I've always said, we get that around here too. Red flag warnings come in various levels. Like there's just some certain certain parameters that'll get you a red flag warning, but it could be winds, could be humidities. But, but if your fuel moistures are high or if your fuel moistures are low and the winds are high, I mean, there's you'll get a red flag warning sometimes that are one, two, three, all the way through 10. This is a 10, level 10 red flag warning, and then they go to 11 on the PDS. I haven't seen one of those in Northern California before. I don't think I have. I don't even think they didn't have them back during the campfire, but I'm sure they would have. Or maybe they did issue one. I don't think they did. Uh, okay, so this is the current, these are the current uh, observations on the ground, updated hourly. This is Mezzo West. This is Oxnard area, Ventura. You got, I go right over the wind barb. We know that the wind is blowing Northeast, well, it says east-northeast, which is good. The peak gusts are up to 30 miles an hour in this zone. You can also see this next one is peaking at 35, and you can see the little flags at the end. That's kind of the, the feathers on the arrow, and the round black thing is the tip of the arrow. So that's the direction the wind is blowing. So that direction, generally north-northeast or east-northeast. And when you get down into the burn zones of Palisades, much better situation. They got a nice day, temperatures in the low 60s, and the winds are, if anything, they're they're just kind of light and variable, which gets you this, gets you air quality that's less than perfect. Let's see if I can pull in here. So you can see the air quality down by Santa Monica. It's not bad, but, but the, the smoke from the smoldering fires is lingering. And you know, you're hearing a lot these, this is purple air, by the way, but you're hearing a lot these days about smoke and its impacts on people right and and we've known this meteorologists have known this for a long time i had a, a class i think it was cloud physics when i was in, in college we talked a lot about stuff that gets in the air and you think about forest fires okay that's you know that's particulate gets in your lungs causes infections and things like that but when you start burning houses and rubber and right, firemen, firefighters, urban wild, or um, residential firefighters have known this for years. It causes problems. And quite frankly, I mean, I, this is anecdotal, but when I started surfing at the beach back in the day, the only guys who surfed and women were not the only people, the majority were cops, firefighters, right? Um, fishermen, people, had, it was a weird, it was kind of a weird subculture of us. And so we would, you know, the, 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 but what I remember is the firefighters, they didn't wear masks and a few of them, number of them and had issues, you know, because of that, whether it be cancer, whether it be some, uh, you know, um, just issues. Uh, I won't go into the details, but it was, it was pretty clear that the smoke from these burning plastics, petrochemical, whatever is re was really bad. This is back in the seventies. So imagine an, an, an inferno like down by the Palisades. Imagine that in all the stuff, all the just 
So it's uh, it's impossible to gauge the air quality in that situation. But it was, uh, I'm sure it was bad, bad, bad. So not to scare you, but just know that air quality is a thing. And one of the best things about where you and I live or we live, well, in California in general, but really Bay Area has got this kind of nailed. The winds, the prevailing winds are northwest. The urban center like San Francisco, San Jose are kind of in these areas, especially San Jose in a little valley. But when the wind, the wind flushes it out quite a bit. Los Angeles doesn't have that same setup. They have a flush, but they also have those big mountains behind them that kind of hold in the pollutants. So we have really, for an urban center, we have really great air quality. It could be better, but we have really good air quality for uh, an urban center with millions of people. Okay, got a frost advisory. That is in effect. Uh, we'll probably go in effect again tonight. This is the 500 millibar um, chart, and this halfway up through the atmosphere and showing disturbances in reds and yellows. And so we're going to go out long range. We're going to go out a week or so and look for the next chance for rain. Circled us right there. And you see, you see stuff, but none of it is what we need. And there's a kind of a weak low pressure. That cutoff low goes right by the coast. And again, by the way, when we look at this stuff, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's, it's a good... Um, it's a good guardrail for like, yeah, this is what could happen. This is and every day we get closer to that, to the day, to the event, whether it be rain or, or offshore winds, and it keeps agreeing. The models keep agreeing. Then you got okay, this is this is kind of holding up. And this model looks very similar to what we showed you yesterday. Uh, this is the GFS. There's an inside slider that'll drop some cool air, but it will also create a bit of an offshore flow in Southern California, who have yet at this point to see rain. We go all the way. Still dry, still dry. This is the 25th and 6th, 25th and 6th. And then by the 26th or 7th, LA looks like they want to get some rain. And then this period looks particularly stormy, the end of January. We'll see how that, that pans out. I'll push through this. This is the accumulated precipitation. Just to show you, that's it. That's, so I just showed you that long the upper air chart. Now we're down on the ground looking for how much rain are we projected to get from the models from this, and where will it fall? Well, LA's actually got a little bit of potential for some uh, scattered sprinkles there, which would be nice, but we're, we're pretty dry, right? We're pretty dry. We're still over 100% of rainfall average. The north part of the state where the big reservoirs are, are doing great. But every day we go without getting rain, we uh, run the, you know, we, we're, we get ourselves in a position where, uh, you know, the, the percents of average go down. So I, I know I feel, I feel gloomy and doomy, but it's just weird to see. It, we get dry spells like this all the time in the winter. We do. It's not unusual. It's just, it's just amazing. I think what happens, it's such a stark reality when you see how California can turn off the water, can turn on the water, right? And we've seen, we used to call it Miracle March, but February will light up. Uh, but in the mountains, right? You know, they're, they're about 100%, 95% of water for where they need to be this time of year. Is it great? Yeah, it's all right. It'd be, I wish it was more because we started off so aggressively. Uh, let me go to another Caltan shot. That was uh, looking at Donner Summit. This is on the way down to, and I wanted to show you how much snow has been lost. This is on the way that Donner Lake is on the right. Uh, this traffic would be westbound. And you're looking at very, very dry conditions. Cold in the mornings down there, as you would guess, but just dry as can be. And uh, it'd be nice to get some snow in there. They're skiing, as you know. We'll go take a look at that as well. This is Ocean Beach. This is kind of where the old uh, Playland was. Oh, it's a little bit, well, it kind of is actually. They built those, a lot of those condos right where the old Playland was. But anyway, so this is kind of Kelly's Cove over in the corner. If you know much about Ocean Beach, Kelly's Cove is where all my friends hang out. <laughs> it's for all the local kids. <laughs> over the years, over since the 40s, 30s, my parents hung out at Kelly's Cove. And it's kind of fun. It's in the corner there, kind of it gets out of the wind. Um, and the wave's pretty good too, because the sand gets kind of stacked up against seal rock there. The, the swell's smaller. Winds are still offshore, but not as aggressively offshore because you don't see that massive backspray that we were seeing. This is steamer lane. Tide is still high in the morning, so we've been seeing those coastal flood advisories in the spots where the tide bumps up to above 6.5. 6.5. You're starting to see some of the areas flood a little bit. And steamer lane, you see some wind. You can see the sailboat blowing around here. 
when still offshore. That is uh, Santa Cruz. This is Rocky Point. We went to the North Shore of Hawaii just because I love this shot. This is morning for them, right? They're a few hours uh, behind us. And you can see, first of all, okay, well, <laughs> okay. I think those are stacked rocks, aren't they? Yeah, I'm funny about stacked rocks. I don't know if I like them only because it's like, I'm like, what is that? Is that an animal? And you kind of, if you're used to being outside, when somebody stacks rocks, your line of sight sees it. And it goes, oh, that could be a mountain lion. And then you get closer and it's like, oh, stacked rocks. So I know I get I get a lot of heat for this because I think it's beautiful too. I get it, but maybe just knock down the stacked rock when you're done because I, I want to see nature as it is. Uh, I know. Okay, so that's Rocky Point. Rocky Point's an interesting wave in uh, it, because it, it's kind of a, it's more of a, it's not a point wave. It's a reef break. It breaks right and left. And the kids love it because it's, it's kind of high performance. They can do all sorts of aerials and things like that. So I know more than you ever wanted to know about Rocky Point, but they got surf over there. It's finally dropped a little bit, but it's still big. Here's the chair lifts. This looks like, um, I think that's KT. I think that is KT coming up through the, the gap here. As a matter of fact, I think this is where that avalanche was a couple years back. Remember that? The folks on the hill, pretty light, not too busy. That's up at Palisades Tahoe. And then this is, I can't, the, I'm, I'm just taking a crapshoot here to see what we get. Okay, and that looks like Siberia. Maybe that's Siberia. I, I, no, it's not Siberia. I don't know what that, that hill is. Um, but anyway, beautiful day in the mountains. Bluebird day, loving it. And then the Homewood area. I know we're just doing a little journey. We're doing a little journey because we know there's a frost advisory tonight. And we know that if we're going to stay dry for a while. Temperatures in the low 60s. And Southern California has one more night to go of extreme, potentially extreme wind conditions. So that's it. This is the this is the bay. You know, you've noticed there's a lot more container ships out in the bay these days. Um, I should know why that is. I, I, I thought in the beginning it was because of the um, COVID and they had their container ships were anchoring out there. But they're obviously doing some work out in the bay with these... Um, you know, uh, dredging ships or, or platform ships or whatever they are uh, inside the bay. Okay, so that's a lot. That's a little rambly, but we did do a kind of a Hawaii, California. Yeah, we didn't do Mount Shasta today. We probably should have, but we'll go check it out another time. Okay, I appreciate you watching. Um, weather's in there. Next chance of rain, somewhere around the 26th.